Okay, this is our Thermo Dynex ion chromatography system. So let's give you a little tour of what we have going on here. So we have our auto sampler. So auto sampler can hold up to 50 samples. So the, um, this plunger goes down and actually filters the sample right into here. Our sample then gets pumped along here and brought, uh, this is where our, uh, brought into a mixing chamber. No, no it's not. All right, so our sample comes in here to our sample loop. We can fill this loop uh, with sample um, while we're actually pumping our eluent. I have to edit this a lot. So um, our mobile phase Bringing you out to play. All right, so what we have up here is an eluent system. It is a regenerated eluent system so that it's diluted on demand. So this is an MSA cartridge, methyl sulfonic acid. We use that if we're doing cation exchange. This one is potassium hydroxide. So we use this one, we're doing anion exchange. And then this is full of high purity water. It's, it's mixed with our eluent um, to actually put it at the uh, concentration that we want. So this is our um, little operating station if we're gonna do this using the instrument or we can actually use software, but right now um, our computer is uh, not very happy. So again, here we are looking at our ICS 2100 uh, from Thermo Dianex. This is a selector that allows us to either be pumping eluent directly onto, onto our column, or we can change the direction, push our sample out of the sample loop, and put that on column. Um, and so our injector allows us to get reproducible amounts of, of sample injected. Our solution runs in here, where our columns live. So we have a heat plate that allows us to control the temperature of the columns. All right, so our solution first runs here, and so it actually passes through a guard column. So the guard column is made of the same material. Um, in this case, we're doing anion, uh, anion chromatography. So we have a, a guard column that's basically there to protect our analytical column from anything that might irreversibly stick. Um, so then it flows through here, goes through our analytical column where all the separation occurs. Um, separation predominantly being by um, charge magnitude, but also affected by ion radius. Um, so we have, um, so here we do have our anions separate and then they actually come to here. This is our uh, suppressor. So when our ions come into here, we actually have a uh, membrane that allows the potassium from the potassium hydroxide get its exchanged with protons. Now when that exchange occurs, the potassium hydroxide, which is a strong electrolyte, becomes water, right? So potassium changes out for protons. We end up with protons and hydroxide, which makes water, which is uh, non-conductive, unlike potassium hydroxide, which is highly conductive because it's an electrolyte. So when that exchange occurs, it suppresses our eluent signal uh, because we measure um, our signal based on conductivity. So then the anions, say sulfate, would now be sulfuric acid, or nitrate would be nitric acid, um, any phosphate coming through would be phosphoric. And so those remain highly conductive, they remain strong electrolytes so that they'll be detected readily by our, um, by our conductivity detector. So we pass through here, and then we actually go into our conductivity cell. So the conductivity cell is a flow-through cell, and so we, we detect um, the, the conductivity which is reflective of the, the number of ions that are in solution. The more ions, the higher the concentration, the higher the current. Um, therefore, you're going to get a larger uh, signal. So the output from this is a chromatogram, which basically plots time relative to um, uh, conductivity. And so we actually see a series of peaks as our different ions elute from the column. The retention time is indicative of what the ion is. And of course, we run standards so that we can identify the ions. Um, and then, of course, the size of the peak will reflect the concentration of the ions in solution.